Hey guys, XK here, showing up smiling. Today I want to talk about your anxiety BFFs or your anxiety best friends forever. And I know that we all have these things that kind of trigger us into thinking that we're okay, but all of a sudden they come out of the blue and then we realize the trigger tells us that we're not okay. And I know that I've had my share of these triggers where these um, BFFs just show up unexpectedly and there's a way that we can deal with this okay and I just want you to stay to the end till I give you kind of a secret hack for how to deal with your anxiety BFFs by the way if this content resonates with you and helps you you find it useful for even your other friends or family go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button and definitely leave me comments down below for others to engage with. So we're talking about these triggers around anxiety, you know, and what is a trigger? Well, basically it's something that sets you off. It could be somebody's voice, it could be an expression, it could be some type of behavior that someone does around you that kind of sets you off. Basically what it does is it reminds you of something in the past that used to upset you or it may still upset you pretty harshly and you're going along and all of a sudden just like somebody fired a gun pulled a trigger bam and there you are feeling anxious about something or maybe worried nervous overthinking the thing well that's a trigger and the idea is to be aware of the trigger so when the trigger actually gets pulled you are less prone to react or overreact just having the awareness that that trigger is going off and that it is causing you to respond in a certain way that itself is gold so what are these bffs that we're talking about well there are three of them one is the social media stalker one is the procrastination phantom. And then we have one that's called the future forecaster because it's looking out into the distance and trying to predict what's gonna happen then, well before the thing ever happens. So let's get right into these things talking about the social media stalker. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Twitter, if you're on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you name it, there are plenty of social media stalkers out there. And who are they? They're the people who are trying to make you feel like your life is not as good as theirs. All right, that's as simple as that. You see a person that's dancing, for example, I see this woman who's dancing all the time, she has millions of views. And I'm thinking, what is it about this person that makes everybody want to watch her? Well, it's not so much that people want to watch her that triggers you. It's the idea that she has a million views and I don't, right? Same thing goes with you. Person gets on and talking about their hair, their jewelry, their makeup, the clothes they wear the money they're making. I mean, there are tons of folks out there talking about how much money they make passively online. That is a social media stalker, for sure. It's the only place in the world where people are talking about how much money they make. I work in ministry. No one talks about how much money they make in real life in ministry or when I worked in finance. But online, on social platforms, Everybody, well not everybody, that's an exaggeration. A lot of people are talking about it. And you can look up any given search term and you'll see someone popping up with something that can trigger you. So the idea is that we're comparing our life to other people's lives. And that becomes the trigger that's kind of operating unconsciously in the back of our heads. By knowing what you're doing, by 
watching social, that is enough that you can actually stop the process to once you become aware of it. So that's the one that really everybody needs to be aware of, the social media stalker. Sometimes they just sneak into your lives when you're least expecting it. If you get onto Pinterest, you're gonna see all kinds of stuff that makes you wonder how are people coming up with these ideas for all this stuff that they can sell. Social media stalker, keep that in mind. Number two is the procrastination phantom. Well, you're thinking, what is the procrastination phantom? Well, if you find yourself putting off things today that you think you can do tomorrow or putting off things until tomorrow that you know you can do today, that is a procrastination phantom and it can cause you anxiety. Why? Because as long as you're putting it off, you're not doing it. You're not doing the thing that you know you need to be doing or intend to be doing or have some inclination or motivation to do, but not quite enough to actually get it done. This is a phantom of your mental space, let me tell you. And I have done it my, myself many times, but now I realize when the idea strikes me to do something, I'm gonna do it right then. Unless I just cannot break concentration or something physically prevents me, I'm in the middle of a task that I have to get done, I don't wanna be distracted, I'm gonna get it done. But here's the thing that I think I've learned that makes it more doable and more bearable so that you're not procrastination, procrastinating in full stride. That is, write it down. If you can't do it right then, keep your notepad there. I keep a notepad by my desk and I'm always jotting down things that I need to get done. So when I realize that I'm about to put off something till tomorrow, or even the next day that I might be able to get done today, tell myself, well, maybe I don't feel like it. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, I got to feel like doing it. I just need to get up and do it. So when I get that motivation to overcome the procrastination phantom, I'm rolling. So keep that, that in mind. I'm just trying to think of some things that I often have done in the past, and it typically revolves around chores, you know, chores to go return something at Walmart, for example. You buy something, get it home, like we went on vacation a few weeks ago down to Tahiti, and I bought some snorkeling gear, because I wanted to go snorkeling when I got to Tahiti. Bought this mask, this breathing tube. Luckily, I didn't buy the fins, and when I got down there, First thing I realized is that our Airbnb hosts had get shelves and racks of, of snorkeling gear. So I never needed to use mine. But then I brought it back with me, sitting outside of my wash and dryer area in the garage, and it's still not gone. Back to Walmart. Luckily, I got some time to get it back. But that's an example of a procrastination phantom that is kind of haunting me right now. So I need to get that thing back. But I know I have made steps. I took it out of the box that it was in. Well, I'll take to put it to maybe backtrack. I got it back, it was sitting on the table, and I took it and put it on the counter. Then I moved it out to the garage in a bag. And now it's just a matter of taking the bag back to the store. So that phantom is still with me. And I'm here to tell you that it's real. And because I've said it, I'm now going to do it. And then this last one is the future forecaster. Now, we're always looking ahead. And in a way, looking ahead is how we ensure that we do things before the time comes. But there are times when we're trying to forecast things that we really need to just wait and see what takes place. 
but the future forecaster has a tendency to be in the negative. And that's the thing that I believe we need to realize about this BFF is that the negative can create the anxiety because you're building scenarios in your head based on fear. What I say is false evidence appearing real. And that in itself creates more anxiety. So there are ways that you can kind of deal with this. And the best way is just to tell yourself, stay in the present, breathe, get into your body, basically, and just breathe. If you focus on your breath, even if I do that now, it just brings me back to center. Now, this is why they call that the centers, because this is really the center of your heart space. If you can get into this heart space right here, right there in the middle, your heart space, that takes you out of thinking about the future, but, and instead, into the present moment. And in the present, if you can focus on the present, no harm can come to you. I mean, this sounds kind of magical, but if I'm focusing on the present moment, just being here now, being with me, being with whatever I am tasked to do in this moment, breathing, remaining calm, that's it. That future forecaster is a BFF I can get rid of for the time being. So that's my word is to put the BFF in its place. So we talked about these three triggers. We've got the social media stalker, the procrastination phantom, and the future forecaster. And these are all BFFs that we need to just kind of make peace with. If we can make peace with these fools, and I say fools in jest, we can better manage the anxiety in our lives. And really what you want to do is turn these BFFs into allies, into um, forces for good that can help you be more aware and alert to what's going on in the current moment that you're in, because there's no better moment than the present at any given time. And even me, a person who's written about anxiety in the book, Stop Anxiety in Its Tracks, I still have to remind myself that slowing down, being calm, making friends with my anxiety BFFs is a good thing to do. So how do you just kind of get a handle on this? Really, the secret to it that I promise you is all within you. It's about laughter. You know, if you can find some way to laugh at yourself and laugh at your anxiety, that will bring you down a notch. I'm going to tell you a true story. When I was in Alaska just last month, I was out um, fishing, and this guy basically verbally assaulted me because I was fishing close to him or closer than he thought was normal. Now, I had just come from a place where we were fishing a lot closer together. They call that combat fishing in Alaska where you're side by side with somebody casting your line out. And this guy just started calling me names. And in the end, he started, he just says that nickname me is Earl. Now, I'm no Earl, all right? I'm no Earl. No one's ever called me Earl. My name doesn't sound anything like Earl. My name is Kalani, it's not, or XK. This fool is gonna start calling me Earl. So I'm thinking, I'm just gonna, you know, roll with this. I'm not gonna get upset. I'm just gonna let it go. And I just started laughing with the dude, basically. I mean, he was making jokes to people around him. It wasn't funny, but I just started laughing anyway. And eventually, you know, it just kind of calmed me down and kept me from overreacting and perhaps getting into a real fight with this dude because that was what it was leading to. But I wasn't really in the mood for any type of altercation or even any verbal sparring with the dude. So I just tried to make it as funny as I could. I rolled with his jokes and listen, and before I knew it, he had walked off, and I had caught a fish. <laughs> All right, that's what I'm talking about. I had caught that fish, so. 
My friends, I hope this has been something that has been useful for you. And I want to encourage you to make friends with your anxiety BFFs. Turn them into allies. And remember, always stay in the present as much as you can and use laughter as a remedy for managing your BFFs wherever you find yourself. Don't forget to click subscribe and like and leave a comment in the bottom about your BFFs and we will stay in touch. Out of here.